Welcome to lecture number 6 on computational geometry. Today we want to talk about the point localization problem or the everlasting question where the hell am I? So we first want to define what the problem is and then we want to find a model and how to solve it. What exactly do we want to do? So imagine you have a map, for example here is the map of Germany and you are somewhere on this map. So you know your exact location but now you want to figure out in which state am I? So maybe you don't know Germany well enough or you took a wrong way on the road and now you want to figure out which area am I? So you want to figure out if I have this point and I have all these polygons, in which of these polygons does this point lie in? Geometrically all these borders are given as polylines, so it's just a sequence of segments. So all these areas are polygons and they are disjoint, they don't share any interior, so we only want to figure out if we are given these boundaries in which of these regions, of these boundary regions am I. So if you want to model this as a geometric problem, we can assume we are, have a planar subdivision of the plane and we have n segments. And now we want to do some pre-processing so that we can answer point location queries quickly. And the first question I have for you is, what would you look for here? Like, if you have this point, where would you check to figure out in which area you are? And one way to check in which area you are is, you go in two directions. So you go downwards first, until you hit the boundary, and then you go upwards until you hit the boundary. And with these two boundaries, you can figure out in which cell you are. Of course, then the boundaries have to know which cells they belong to and which side of uh, the segments belong to which cell, but that's something you should be able to do. But the question is, again, how do you answer this? So how would you pre-process this? We only have the segments, we don't have any order of them, they are not sorted in any way, and we can do this check, we can walk downwards, but that means we have to compare with every segment of the input. So we need order of n time to figure out what is the first segment that I hit if I walk downwards. And the same for going upwards. An order of n query time that's very long, we would like to do it much faster. So how would you pre-process this set of segments so that we can faster answer these queries? Well, that's the question that we want to ask in this lecture, so it's not that easy, but the main idea is quite easy. The main idea we can use is we first divide it into slabs, so we partition it into slabs induced by the vertices. What are the vertices? That's the endpoints of the segments. And we can find slabs by just placing a vertical line through all of these vertices, like this. Now we have all of these vertical slabs, which are all just rectangles. And those we can store, for example, in the binary search tree. So if we store them, then in order of log n time, we can figure out in which of these slabs does the point lie in. And that's the first step we do. So we find the first, the correct slab. And now, inside the slab here, we have some regions. But these regions are ordered from top to bottom. and all of these regions they cannot have holes because for every hole you have you would have some vertex there and they cannot be disjoint so it's just a sequence of regions from top to bottom and if you look at this they are ordered for example on the left boundary the same way they are ordered on the right boundary so it's just um, again some ordering we have a partition into these slabs and we can again store them in some binary search tree to figure out in which of these regions we are now. And then we find this region. And now if all these smaller regions in the slabs know which larger region they belong to, then we can answer the query in order of log n time. So with just two binary search trees, one for the x coordinates of all these uh, vertices of the input and one for the y coordinates of these regions we can figure out where our point lies in. The question however is how long does it take to create this data structure and how large can this data structure be? And the bad thing is 
that the space can be that of n squared. Can you find an example where the space of what we do here would be theta of n squared? To do this, it's enough to figure out that the number of these smaller regions is quadratic. And then in our, the union of these two binary search trees would be quadratic. So we only have a linear number in the first binary search tree, but in all those second level binary search trees, if each of them has a linear number, or most of them have a linear number, then you have quadratic space. And to construct something like this is very easy. We start with a very long segment, then we add a smaller one that's included, another smaller one that's included, and so on until we have n over two segments. And now we want to figure out how many of these regions we have. So for the first segment, we have n plus one regions here because it's subdivided by every vertex of the input. And for the second one, we only have two fewer. These two get thrown out, so we have n minus one. For the next one, we have n minus three and so on. So this is just the sum of n plus 1 minus 2i, and this easily solves 2n squared over 4. So we have n squared over 4 small regions, and that means that the union of these data structures is quadratic. And uh, quadratic space is often a problem. If you have a lot of data, like if you have 1000 points, then that's already a million. Or if we look, even if you look at Germany, like the boundaries, they are very concise. You need many points to store the boundaries. And then you might need a lot of space just for this data structure. That's something you often cannot afford. So we want to have something that has a smaller space, but we can still answer in order of log n time all our queries. And the second bad thing is, if we only look at the time to pre-process this, we have a data structure, we have binary search trees that have total size order of n squared. To build a binary search tree of size order of n, you need order of n log n time. So just to create these binary search trees, we also need order of n squared log n time. Maybe that's too much for us. Maybe we don't want to spend so much time. So what we want to do is we want to find a better pre-processing where we can store our data in less than that of n squared space, and it takes less than order of n squared log n, preferably even less than order of n squared time, to create the data structure. 